it was when I was around eight years old that it started to be consistent. So very young. I identify as OCD as something that creates me lots of discomfort and anxiety and that leads me to uh, have compulsions. There are some mental health issues. Uh, I prefer not call them illnesses because it doesn't resonate much with me using these kind of words uh, to define some struggles. Uh, but there are some mental struggles in today's society that are more romanticized. In a way, they're portrayed more and they are seen as more acceptable. Um, I'm thinking about eating disorder, depression, anxiety, addiction. Um, I'm not sure how much these works with OCD, how much representation we, we get. Usually, uh, for what I've seen, if we get some representation, it's something that makes people laugh a bit. Um, and as much as I'm a fan of irony and sarcasm and laugh your way through troubles, because laugh is actually a beautiful and strong medicine, very powerful. At the same time, maybe it could make you feel even more ashamed because while you are doing your compulsive behaviors in order to stop that anxious thought and fear, you already feel pretty ashamed of yourself. Chances are, if you're self-aware, of course, uh, because you're like, what the heck am I doing? R rationally, you may know that, I don't know, checking your house door 300 times to see if it's locked before going to bed um, is not gonna <laughs> prevent any bad thing that might happen, but still you have the compulsion to, um, to go for it, to do it. Uh, so I remember when I was around eight years old that these thoughts that gave me lots of fear started to be more, more and more common and that led me to develop routines and uh, behaviors to suit myself from it. Like I remember, for example, that I was extremely scared of illnesses and losing loved ones and that would lead me to uh, pray three times the same prayer every time I had this thought. Or another thing I used to do as a kid was I was really, really scared. I had these intrusive thoughts of dying in my sleep, sleep apnea, which is something I still have fear of. And when I have huge anxiety, I go into apnea in my sleep, so... Uh. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, I had this fear of dying in my sleep to the point that um, I forced myself to fall asleep with my mouth open and breathe through my mouth all the time because in case my nose would stop functioning, I would uh, I would I could still breathe. And I remember that in the morning I would wake up with such dry and pain in my throat, um, and also this led to bad development of my facial features. So my chin is underdeveloped. And I don't know if you're familiar with what is mewing, but also. Uh, you know, this affected my development, my fears affected my development, my posture, everything. I was very, very, um, a very scared kid. And this comes from the fact that I was forced to... I felt like a, an alien since a very young age and I had to learn how to mask because, of course, of uh, neurodivergency. And to high conscience, I always had a huge conscience, I could always spot uh, patterns I could always spot um, dangers, things that could happen, that could go wrong. And also because of environmental trauma uh, and things that happened when I was very, very, very young. Well, these rituals started since I was very, very, very young. And I distinguish from the autism routines because autism routines, from my experience, since there is not huge knowledge on this topic still, it's something that helps you function. Uh, well, OCD routines, OCD compulsion behaviors is something that it's a pain in the ass and it takes a lot of energy to perform them, but you still do them because being in the fear feeling is very, very intense and not always you manage to face it. 
And this is the difference with, between a person that's healthy and has a fear thought and accepts the fear. That's it. And someone that has OCD, you have a fear thought that keeps coming in a loop in your brain and, and you feel the fear so close, so imminent, so possible to happen that in order to suit yourself, you have to perform something, like you have to do something. It's a loop thought, it's gonna come back. And unless you're gonna do what helps you suit that fear, it's gonna stay there. The, ang the anxiety, the feeling, so this is what is battling with OCD. And as much as it can be sometimes overlooked, OCD was ranked by the World Health Organization as one of the 10 most handicapping conditions, lost income and decreased quality of life. So it's one in on the top 10 most debilitating struggles uh, that a person could suffer from because it literally prevents you from living your life fully. The intrusive thoughts are real and they come and they're intrusive thoughts because you didn't sit down and thought about them. Like it's like, to me, it's like this image, you know, shoot it in my head. And I didn't want to think about it. I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't even think I could think about it. And it comes and, and then you have to do something with it. So, Scientifically speaking, um, there are mainly four types of OCD and when it comes to me I still feel lucky because I am sure I'm not struggling as much as other people because what I thought it was OCD for me turned out more to be overlapping with some autistic traits hence they don't cause me this huge amount of anxiety but there are still some things that happen and occur and let me tell you they ruin my the quality of my life like for example my phone memory was about to die i had to delete stuff that have been on my phone for years and this act led me to a panic crisis anxiety crying because I ruined, like I took away something that has been there for quite some time and something that has been there for quite some time in a way reassures me and modifying that means stepping into the unknown and bad things could happen. Like it's very weird to explain, like either you get it or you don't, but for real, it, it's like this, like it's very harsh, it's very hard. I like to bring more awareness because I think there are many, many, many people actually struggling with it. Either they are self-diagnosed or diagnosed or not even aware of it. I can think about my family. I know that there are some people in my family that do struggle with OCD without even acknowledging the issue. There's definitely a support system somewhere and I know that it's hard to find it because I've been struggling with OCD since I was, let's say, seven, eight years old, approximating the number. And only last year I managed to speak up and ask for help if you're an adult person, a woman and knows how to mask and times also um, takes away the validation from you because my experience with receiving a diagnosis was very harsh and I was not being believed. I laughed because it was very, very painful. Like I sat down finally trying to find the strength to admit some things I did and what I received from these old men that claimed to be experienced was like I think you just have problems with attention like you're maybe seeking attention or there are some new things coming to your life you're growing up and it gives you anxiety duh yes it's normal I understand it but not to the point that you end up having meltdown twice a week becoming violent and crying and whatever now we lack support system for people that somehow try to ask for help and it's denied i see also for for men especially that mental health because of toxic masculinity is considered more taboo um, i see people that are struggling with it and they might feel ashamed to come forward but when it comes to ocd i'm actually not feeling ashamed at all um, i could yeah maybe i wouldn't feel good talking about the routines I do because if you're someone that struggles with OCD you know that they are very personal they are very also funny looking sometimes and it's <laughs> it's not the best but I think that I would maybe in the near future also be able to share them because 
I understand that it's a struggle that needs to be overcome. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with me uh, or with you. In some experiences that wounded us and led us to develop a defense mechanism, there's nothing to be ashamed of that. Actually, you need to hug yourself because it meant that you kind of went through a good amount of suffering. Uh, so it doesn't make me feel ashamed, it doesn't make me feel bad and I'm ready to fight everyone that would be willing to laugh or bully me or you or whoever, like, the fuck. According to the latest researches, um, obsessive compulsive disorder uh, has four dimensions and the first one is the contamination symptoms, which means that you are uh, worries about germs, feeling of disgust, washing and constant cleaning. Uh, when it comes to this, for example, I'm not super duper affected by it. And once again, the things I find uh, a struggle with can be overlapped with autism. But yeah, I do tend I tend to come out, come off as a bit of a germophobic, and I sometimes do ruin my hands because of overwashing them. Uh, but it's oh my god. <laughs> But it's not something debilitating for me, like, um, the only thing that I could say that really gives me a huge amount of disgust, disgust is touching with my, fee with my feet the shower base, I don't know what they're called, like, it, for some reason it gives me the ick. I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with that. Or touches sponges. Well, I think this could be also somehow normal. I mean, not to the point that sometimes I would prefer not shower in order not to touch the... But okay, so once again, this is the contamination symptom. So if you're someone that's very highly germophobic, extremely scared of germs and constantly need to wash, you feel disgusted, you could also feel like puking or start to feel that you're gonna get illnesses or stuff. This could be your dimension. Um, there's also, there is the symmetry arranging, so evening up. Uh, touching and tapping objects and arranging them until they feel right is also something I don't uh, experience much like what I experience is that if something I left something on in a certain order I would like not to touch that order that stays there like if mm, I don't know my clothes in my wardrobe are hanged in a certain way or on my shelf I have certain amount of stuff don't don't touch them don't put them away don't change the like leave leave them there because they should be as they are not bothered if something is not symmetrically arranged and i know some people are like it's normal everyone like things organized mm, following the chromatic order or being like this or okay yes it could be up until a certain point normal it's not normal when not arranging those things good creates a huge discomfort, anxiety, the bad, bad feeling that either you do it or you're gonna explode. <clears throat> it's not normal. There's a di huge difference between normal and familiar. Uh, this is what I also see in my family history, that some things have been, have been thought that are normal because they're familiar. They've been doing, like, my mom does some things and her mom did those things and the mom of the mom of the mom did those things. They could keep telling to the children, it's normal, like I do that, that, it's not normal, it's familiar. It just means that you're just perpetuating generation of people that have the same struggle. Like, it's not normal. Let's stop. Let's normalize, not normalizing things that aren't normal. They're just familiar. And the thing with familiarity is that makes you feel safe because you're like, okay, she does, it means nothing is wrong. It all comes to... What quality of life do you want to have? Do you want to live a life that's apparently normal but causes you struggles and stress and takes away from you a huge amount of energy? Or do you want to acknowledge the fact that if something takes away a huge chunk of energy from you, it actually means that there's some struggle behind and you might need to work on it. Doubt and harm. So worries about accidental harming, repeated uh, checking for safety. So this is something maybe I do more when I was younger and still now I'm all, all constantly scared of killing people by mistake or also being killed by mistake. I was very scared of killing my little sister by mistake. Um, every time I wanted to tickle her or whatever, 
And once she said, once she said, oh my gosh, you are about to kill me, I literally started to panic and we were laughing about it, but I'm very scared. <laughs> Accidentally killing my dog, um, but it doesn't cause me uh, compulsive and obsessive behavior. What happens more to me and it's more something typical that goes on when it comes to OCD is the fact that, yes, I need to check constantly uh, that the kitchen is safe, that the door is locked. I need to do these constant checkups, uh, at least in my house in Rome, uh, to, I mean, my family's house in Rome, um, to make sure before I go to bed that everything's safe. I might need to give it a look more than once. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something that that kind of is there. Unacceptable tab taboo thoughts, this is the part I struggle the most, um, which is uh, ruminating, mental review, reassurance, checking. So what is this is basically having fearful thoughts that leads you to have some sort of routines or gesture. See, remember when I was little in bed, I was having during the night these bad, bad uh, intrusive thoughts. Uh, and I remember that I had to, apart from praying also, and so I had to touch multiple times uh, two shells I had in a certain order. Um, so yeah, basically you have a thought and you need to do these sort of routines and do these gestures, praying, saying something, whatever helps you to soothe you and make you feel okay with yourself. And this also, can be kind of disturbing because also sexual thoughts like sometimes your brain gives you intrusive thoughts of very disturbing stuff it's often involves either incest or family members or just disgusting things or you being raped and like it's it's harsh i don't know it's not beautiful to speak to say it out loud and this video might need to have some age limit uh but it is how it is like it's like this it happens and you feel ashamed because it's still your brain you're like am i thinking this stuff like am i a psychopath uh but at the same time you're not thinking this like, it's intrusive thoughts like it come to you and you feel you feel very guilty you feel ashamed you feel disgusted you feel scared that yeah, you have anxiety and of course you have to develop something that makes you go away from that amount of discomfort now what i've learned in my experience is that i'm not sure i'm gonna get rid of ocd um, doesn't make me depressed much because I've been struggling with it as, since I was a kid so honestly I don't even know how I would look like without uh, OCD. At the same time I know that if you have the strength to work on your on your resilience and you can train yourself a bit when you feel like it to stay in the discomfort and fear I can see that um, thanks to a therapy and some support I've been managing to gather and as I said before support didn't come easy as well like you have to not only not only you're struggling you also have to fight to get the right amount of support to receive validation the right amount of the good kind of treatment uh, but I can see how it's going slightly better and I'm learning to ground and work on body regulation when it comes to that huge amount of fear and anxiety that leads me to do those uh, compulsive behaviors, which I still do, of course, but um, I see a light of hope and want to somehow convey that hope to you that um, if we're willing to be courageous and brave and sit in the fear when we manage to do that, because of course when it's too much, you do you and help yourself because it's it's harsh i know it but when you manage to stay in that fear and regulate your body through breathing grounding meditation um, slowly your brain not, might not get there but your body will and your body will regulate itself to feel better and you will see that things that may be by practicing these things that maybe some time ago gave you huge response also when it came to body like breathing sweating panic anxiety you will see that it's gonna be your brain panicking but your body staying calm and i think that in this might lie a solution of course there are many solutions to treat ocd i i am personally not taking any medication or anything just because 
um, I want to for once in my life um, do what feels right for me and I seek help in these kind of practices as much and also knowledge and also spirituality so having OCD sucks having OCD is debilitating um, if you put on top of that other struggles ADHD anxiety the disorder depression wh whatever it's it gets tough you have complete validation from me i am hugging you but also think that you have power in this still your brain like it's still you you have power over this you have you you can have control having control can also mean uh accepting that sometimes you don't have the control and let it flow you're in control you're still in the driver's seat you just have to somehow crack the code to reclaim that power but i know that right now you might feel like a ship in the stormy sea you're gonna get there you're gonna get to the land um, no matter how stormy the sea is gonna be some days are gonna be calmer some days are gonna be very stormy shitty weather you are not completely 100% a victim of this you should you know you shouldn't just be like i give up my mental health is not is preventing me from leaving my mental health is this is that because the, your mental health is still you like it's still you you can still have beautiful times you can still live a beautiful life while also going through some shitty times like i know it doesn't make much sense but you can still enjoy life while having a problem focusing on the struggle constantly without building also something else to look forward is never the solution you is you you can live an amazing life even if you have OCD or even if you have any other struggle whether you might not be aware of it your struggle is giving you some skills and if you shift your mentality from being just a victim of it to yes understanding that these things are not pleasant and you actually need validation of your suffering but also you're acquiring something and you are definitely stronger than you were or would have been without some of the things you go through you put yourself back in the driving seat of your life you have the power to change it accept it make the best out of it don't make your struggle carry you but walk with your struggle with pride as if it was a birkin bag like bitch i have this problem and still i carry myself with so much grace strength beauty i hope this video was something good definitely something different for me and um very very vulnerable but i love vulnerability it felt like doing this video like it was in my brain as i want to do other videos about my struggles not only because i like to appeal relatable to other people that might go through the same thing but because it's extremely therapeutic or not you know, if you're not affected by these issues, that it was informative for you, especially maybe if you have someone close that suffer from OCD, just be gentle with them and don't push them into doing anything it's uncomfortable for them. They are gonna heal at their own pace. Don't force them to break routine, don't force them to, don't call them germophobic, don't be like, oh my gosh, you're weird because chances are the person already feels pretty bad about themselves. So if you do love them and care about them, just sit gently next to them and let them do their let them do their their journey and thank you for listening to sticking around to watch up until this point of uh video chances are you're like one of the two percent people staying um i wish you an amazing day i send you lots of love and oh my god damn Beautiful, beautiful makeup. Like blend the blend the shitty eyeliner all over your face. I don't know how to say it in English. Ah.